Welcome to Field Engineering. I'm your host, J.D. Brake, and today we have a very special guest, Jackson Systems' own Tyler Hirschberger. Tyler, how are you? I'm doing great, J.D. He's our, uh, he's our video guy, and he's uh, stepping out behind the camera, in front of the camera, because uh, he's our smart home expert. You might have seen him on the uh, smart home training mm -hmm. uh, that we did. So we're going to talk about some three you know, qu quick bullet points on some obstacles to overcome when hooking up uh, connected devices in the home. What are the three most, I guess, kind of roadblocks that our contractors would face trying to set up a smart home or build a smart home for the customer? Sure. So, like, the big ones are going to be the passwords to begin mm -hmm. with, making sure you have all your, your Wi-Fi passwords and everything like that for the home's network. The second one's going to be connectivity and coverage. Mm -hmm. So, do you have enough Wi-Fi signal throughout the whole house? And then the last one is be choosing the right frequency for the products. Okay. Well, so... On the passwords, mm -hmm. now you're talking about the individual products or the router uh, in the home? Well, so both. So when you're setting up a smart home, you're going to have to have the passwords for the accounts for those products okay. as along with the passwords for the home Wi-Fi network to be able to connect to. Okay. So what's uh, what's a good suggestion for a password? What's so, your password? <laughs> what's my password? Uh <laughs> A B C one two three. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> or uh, one two three. One four. two three four five. <laughs> Sounds like a jerk would have that as a password. <laughs> Only an idiot. <laughs> Only an idiot. <laughs> anyway, so it's my password. <laughs> so if you have, if you're creating a, a password and username for the accounts for smart home stuff, mm -hmm. we highly recommend that you actually have a unique one for your smart home. So you actually go and create a whole new email whole new account oh, okay. for the smart home for that user. So it could be, ah. I don't know, Wilson's smart home at gmail.com. And then they would have their own unique email and password. So that wow. way it is more of a security uh, protection. There you go. That's not a bad idea. And then when it comes to Wi-Fi, we highly recommend setting the Wi-Fi as a passphrase to help with security. So if the passphrase might be, I don't know, the blue fox jumped over the, I don't know, the pig. And something like that. Something okay. easy to remember. How could you forget that image? Right? Right? The blue fox jumped over the pig. Yeah. But it's it's a phrase that's easy to remember, but yet hard to brute force and guess. Right. So then just replace, like, the vowels with numbers. Yeah, yeah, you like could that. do that. Or, or capitalize stuff or put a period at the end. Yeah. Past phrases are are a lot more secure, mainly because they're easy to remember. Yeah, and write them down. Write them down somewhere where no one will find it. <laughs> write it down on a piece of paper and just put it on your counter. <laughs> right, exactly. Mm. Or put it on the fridge like people do. They're like, put their internet password right there. Right there. On the fridge. Now, what about signal strength? Because I know some, not all homes are created equal as far as getting the signal strength from one end of the router, where the single point router is, mm -hmm. to another end of the house. Um, I even experienced that too. Sure. Um, as far as I don't get a, a good enough or I don't get a great internet signal upstairs in the loft as I do compared down into my living room. So how do we overcome that? Sure. So there's two ways we can look about it. So if, if single point or mainly just having a single router within your home is going to be the main solution, you have to think of your, your Wi-Fi signal as water. So if you oh. get a router put it in a little utility closet, lock all the doors, and then hope that you're going to get internet around the entire house. What you've done is you've just contained all that signal within that little box. And especially mm. if there's anything metal in there, like uh, maybe put in a utility closet with your equipment, mm. and then it's just your signal is not going to be very strong around the house. Right. So if you can get that router out in more of a central location, like in a kitchen or something like that, where it's a little bit more open, and then that signal can spread out throughout the house. That would be one way of doing it. Okay. Or the second way is actually going a different route, what we would call mesh networking. Okay. So that's what we have here is a mesh router where you put multiple devices around the house and it would actually just extend that single network ah, okay. all throughout the home so you have multiple points of coverage. Oh, so, I didn't know that. So this not only is a boost for signal, um, but it also can control the traffic. 
uh, yeah. for all the devices connected in there. Yeah, so this is a smart router, so you're going to have control of it from your phone like every other device now today. Yep. And, and so you'll be able to see what's going on. You'll be able to set limits. So if your your kids are, you know, want them to come eat and they're just sitting at uh, in their rooms on their phones or whatever, you can shut those down. And or at least Shame they, on you for least... being a bad parent. Just let them veg out on the phone. That's what I say. <laughs> so you have a little bit of control there. And then the, the last thing that you really have to worry about is determining or choosing which network. Because a lot of times routers will have either a 2.4 gigahertz or a 5 gigahertz right. bandwidth in a lot of days. So 5 is mainly used for a high high uh, definition video streaming. Mm -hmm. So if you have a smart TV or something like that, you want to use the five gigahertz bandwidth right. for that because it's going to be faster, but the 2.4 is going to be more secure as far as it's just every smart home device that you have in your home is going to be speaking 2.4. And okay. it's just a lot of our devices nowadays actually speak that, that uh, protocol. So when you're connecting your smart home, you want to connect it to the 2.4, not the 5. Awesome. And there's there's options to choose that in the smart home products. In, in most types of routers, yes. Okay. So the average router that you would get from your internet provider or, say, an Asus router or a Net, uh, Netscape, Netscape, Net Gear, Net Gear, sorry. Netscape. Netscape is an old internet provider. Yeah, that's, that brings you back. Yeah. Wow. So it's been a while <laughs> since I've had that. Um, <laughs> Those, those type of routers, yes, you can choose which one. The, the Google Wi-Fi actually does it for you. They say that they're smart enough that they can help you out by making that decision. Nice. Now, do you recommend um, using the Internet Service Provider's router or going out and getting your own? Is there really a big difference? <sighs> it depends on how your Internet Provider does it. If they just give it to you for free then and you have a relatively small home, that's a great solution. But if they you, charge you for it, but you if, go out it, and buy yeah. one, huh? If, you, if they're charging you like a rental fee, like 10 bucks a month, I mean, you would be able Comcast. to <laughs> go buy it and you'd have <sighs> it yourself and like paid it off in three months. Comcast is the devil. I have no qualms about saying that. So they're not paying us to do this anyway, so who cares? Right. <laughs> but uh, no, that's great information, Tyler. I mean, this is, this is stuff we want to help the uh, contractors overcome and get comfortable with. And plus, they can always call us. They can even talk to you, mm -hmm. whether, whether you like it or not. Uh, we're going to funnel some uh, tech calls your way for smart home because we want you guys to overcome that and take control of the smart home space because there's no reason why you should not be offering this to your customers and building out from whether it's starting at the thermostat and then building out into security, building out to peace of mind, convenience, all that. You can do all that. And uh, Jackson Systems will be here every step of the way. So if you have any questions, please give us a call at 888 652 9663. Check out the website. All these uh, wonderful products are available, especially this here on the website. But um, Tyler, anything else before we sign off here? Nope. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of Fields Engineering for 2020. We hope to see you next time. I'm JD Brake. Talk to you soon. <laughs>